We welcome in ESPN's Trevor Maddich, college football insider and former BYU national champion to discuss what the heck happened to BYU football on Friday night. Not only that, but over the last four games. Trevor, let's start with that one. What did you see on Friday that went so wrong for BYU? Well, the, the wheels came off right from the beginning, and BYU couldn't get the wheels back on. Defensively, they just gave up way too many massive plays, and I think part of the reason was desperation on defense, that they didn't feel like they could stop Boise without taking risks, blitzing on run and on pass, and they got burned on those blitzes way too often. Where does BYU start to get better on defense, Trevor? Well, they need to reset their expectations as individual players. Right now with the injuries and with the lack of talent from a pass rushing standpoint at the defensive line, there are things they can't do. But there are things they can do. And those things are play your assignment fanatically with the technique you're taught fanatically and do nothing else. And what we see right now is guys trying to take over other guys' assignments, guys trying to help other guys out, and guys trying to do too much. That's a problem. Now, I can see why they want to do that, because part of the perfect storm is the injury on offense to Taysom Hill, and the defense feels like it has to pick up the slack. But in doing so, they're actually making things worse. Trevor, I've been asked this question a bunch since Friday night when I was in Boise watching uh, that game, and the question is, what does BYU play for now that they've lost four straight. What do you think BYU is playing for now? Well, first they've got to win two more to get to, get to the bowl game. So you start there. Uh, but it's also a matter of pride. You don't have the conference championship, and, and that is an issue. I always enjoyed the conference championship race. And right now the national goals are out the window. But they still have the goals of, of, of the bowl game that they're looking at, the Miami Beach Bowl, and pride in order to build the program up from where it is now. One thing that BYU has always been is a program filled with players that understand what came before them and where they want it to go. And I think that where they want it to go is what they need to build for right now. And a lot of young guys will get a lot of experience now going forward. They have gotten a lot of experience just because of the injuries, but that experience will continue. It will be good for the future, but the future is what they're building for now once they get to those six wins. Does BYU in the final five games, can they do anything that plays into 2015 at all? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What you'll see is young players. There's some young defensive players that have made plays, guys that have made sacks, pick sixes, interceptions, all kinds of things like that. Now what they need to do is turn that into consistent production, but you get that with experience. The offensive line needs to get better, but you've got young guys on the line, and with injuries, some of those young guys have had to play more than the coaches wanted them to play. All that leads into uh, potential for better production next year. Keep in mind that it happens to a lot of teams where they have a, a rash of injuries. And BYU, I don't know how they got so many guys into the ankle injury line, but they did. It's like you look at that particular line, and it's all BYU guys, and they signed up for ankle injuries, I guess. But what it does is, like other teams that have this problem, it's ugly in the moment. But next year you look back on the experience that those young guys got and the lumps that they took, and you see that as part of the building block for the following year's success. ESPN's Trevor Maddich on BYU Sports Nation. It is a Maddich Monday. Trevor, I don't know if you've ever experienced four straight losses in your football career, whether it be at the high school level, at BYU, or in the NFL, but what is the mindset of a football player and a football team when you go through some severe struggles like BYU are going through right now? It shakes you to your core if you care. If you don't care, you shouldn't be there. At BYU, I don't think they have guys that don't care. I think they're mentally tough, even though they have not, they have, they have not been able to physically get the job done. And I think part of that is mental issues, but it's because of striving too hard. But as a football player, your identity is wrapped up in your success on the field. And it's a very physical, very visceral, very caveman kind of thing. You are striving against another man who's trying to physically dominate you on the field of play. And there's a lot of technique and mental side, but it comes down to that physical domination. And he wants to beat you that way. He wants then to laugh about it and laugh about it to his girlfriend, laugh about it to your girlfriend in the parking lot. And that's a very <laughs> personal thing. Yeah. So week in and week out, if you lose, then lose again, then lose again, then lose again. 
then you're shaken to your core. Because at your core, that's a huge part of what you perceive as your value as a man. Now, that's not fair. That is not your value as a man. It's football. Football is not life. But you invest so much in it that that's what it feels like in the moment, and it is an ugly feeling. And that's what we heard from Michael Elisa last week on BYU Sports Nation. And he said, look, right now, for us, the players, football is life. And so we need to turn this around. And part of the turnaround idea was Bronco Mendenhall getting more involved in the defense. He said that he called every play on Friday and took full responsibility for what happened. Did that tell us something about where BYU is at in terms of the past several weeks we tried to say, well, injuries, well, inexperience, well, maybe coaching or something. It seems, it seems like BYU is struggling in all those categories right now. Well, they are struggling in all those categories, and you don't want to make excuses. Sure. But as an analyst, you look at it from a standpoint of reasons. What's going on? Mm-hmm. And BYU is good enough if, it's, if they stayed healthy and if they all did their assignments correctly, good enough to compete with pretty much anybody. And what they have now is that perfect storm of injuries, young guys going in, then guys trying to do too much to compensate, and you end up with none of those things flowing in a good way. I think one of the things you can look at, you know, when you talk about trying to do too much, take a look at Mitchell Jurgens' muffed punt. Yes. That was a long punt. Now, as a punt returner, you need to feel the punt moving forward. You need to get behind it and then move forward, even if it's only slightly. Use your hands to cradle that ball into your body. That's how you do it. Well, he was going backwards because he misjudged it, and then he he didn't use enough speed to reset himself behind the ball so he could feel it coming forward. He was still going backward when it came down, and instead of cradling it into his body with his hands, it hit him in the face. Okay. Well, that kind of a thing was trying to do too much. He needed to make a play there, he felt, and in doing so, he ended up making a big play for the other team. And I can point to a half a dozen plays like that where BYU players tried to do too much. So when you talk about Bronco on the defense, you saw plays like that on defense as well. And that's where Bronco took responsibility, but the truth of it is the players have got to execute what they're taught. And if you don't against a team like Boise, it will be a 70-yard touchdown pass, and that happened a couple of times. How much of Friday night and what happened uh, up in Boise on the blue turf is should be credited to what Boise can do and, and what they did, or was it mostly just what BYU didn't do? It was both. Boise's a very good team. They started the season, remember, giving Ole Miss, uh, who's a top-10 team, all they could handle for three quarters. Going into the fourth quarter, at Ole Miss, that game was 7-6, to six, yeah. Boise trailing only by one point, and then the wheels came off a little bit. But that's a young team that now is putting it together, and the truth of it is I think Boise made a case to the selection committee that uh, should East Carolina and Marshall, the teams that are ranked ahead of them, falter, Boise could be that team to get the automatic berth from the group of five into the New Year's Six Bowls. So Boise is a very, very good team, but so is BYU if they're hitting on all cylinders and they have everybody there. Remember, you lose your Heisman candidate quarterback, a lot of bad things can happen if you don't have great depth, and BYU doesn't have great depth. Yeah, and that's what we've discovered. I think initially the idea was, hey, if BYU had had Taysom Hill, it would be different. But I think we've discovered that it's become more than just about Taysom Hill. No, it is, definitely, without question. And, And part of the thing, I think the coaches will want to evaluate how they're practicing as well. The go hard, go fast means that they practice at a certain clip. And they may want to choke it back for a day or two and just let the guys catch their breath a little bit. I don't know that that's necessary, but I know that right now they're in an evaluation process where they're evaluating everything that they do. Because ultimately, the the physical side, I don't mind if you get beat by a better player for whatever reason. But there's too many mistakes that can be tracked back to a mental error or mental sloppiness. And those things need to be corrected in practice. And right now it's getting worse, not better. Trevor, we're seeing a lot of knee-jerk reaction uh, about what's going on here with BYU and, and the fans surrounding uh, the Cougars specifically. But on the national landscape, this is a brand-new year for the college football playoff. The selection committee poll uh, comes out now tomorrow. What is what is the national uh, perspective of college football as we begin a new era? Right now it's, it's awesome because this is the first – tomorrow night will be the first – poll released by the selection committee. They're in Dallas fighting it out right now face-to-face and to decide what, what it will be. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with the one-loss teams because there's going to be at least one one-loss team in their top four coming in, and who will it be? 
I mean, you've got Alabama and Ole Miss are both one-loss teams, but Ole Miss beat Alabama. So do you think Alabama's better than Ole Miss right now, or do you put Ole Miss ahead because of the head-to-head? The thing that I care about is that they use the criteria or they apply criteria correctly. I hear so much talk nationally about how they're going to choose the best four teams without regard to conference affiliation or conference championship. Well, that means they could have two or three SEC teams in there. I think that would be a huge mistake. I think that all else being relatively equal, they should give conference champions and deserving teams the spots because the regular season is a playoff. It is a playoff. Auburn will play Ole Miss this week, each team with one conference loss. It is a playoff, a playoff. And I think the college football regular season needs to matter for more than just what the seeding will be. So I think that conference championship and the deserving team should trump the best team because at BYU we know that the best team doesn't always win the game. Back in you know many years, BYU didn't necessarily have the most talented team, but they rose up and beat the more talented team. And if the selection committee doesn't have that trump, the better talent, then I don't know why they're there. Trevor Maddich, ESPN College Football Analyst on BYU Sports Nation. Trevor, we appreciate the rational, national perspective. Thanks for talking some people off the ledge. Uh, yes, well, listen, I'm up there with them. Let's talk each other off the ledge. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. <laughs>